Uh, this is where we left off. We'll look in a little bit more detail at what happens at in the distal co collecting tubule. Um, please understand that um, in the entire um, tubule you have a certain amount of reabsorption taking place, uh, but you have a slightly different thing happening at the um, distal convoluted tubule. And you're seeing it on this because you actually have um, areas there where aldosterone can actually, where aldosterone does its work. And remember aldosterone is part of that renin um, uh, angiotensin aldosterone system uh, to increase uh, blood pressure in, uh, due to the uptake of sodium uh, and water following sodium. So here's uh, your, your books image, and for some reason I could get this one much clearer than the other one, um, of hap what's happening in the distal convoluted tubule. Uh, in the entire length of the, the, the DCT, you have this reabsorption of sodium and chloride ions. Sodium and chloride ions, sodium a positive charge, chlor chlor chloride a negative, uh, but that positive sodium ion is going to be reabsorbed uh, in a higher degree. So what you have, because you want to make sure you have your electrochemical gradient within homeostasis, so uh, potassium is going to be exchanged for that sodium. Just the charge. Uh, I mean, you are exchanging potassium for sodium, but it's the charge that you're trying to keep in, uh, that your body's trying to keep in what would be considered normal um, range. And then in the, um, the, the end portion or the, I guess the distal portion of the distal convoluted tubule, so the late portion is, is the way your book talks about it, uh, the portion that interfaces with the collecting duct, um, this is where aldosterone, you have um, aldosterone sensitive cells there uh, that then um, are going to spare sodium. Um, aldosterone is going to reabsorb sodium or, or facilitate the reabsorption of sodium. I guess you could say direct the reabsorption of sodium uh, and do this at the expense of, of potassium ions. Again, because of the electro, um, the electro gradient, uh, but also the solute gradient. So because of the electrochemical gradient. And then uh, here's an overview of the various things that are happening there at the um, junction between the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. Um, you have in the, in the fluid, you have some ammonium chloride uh, that is being secreted and that's the ammonium chloride that gives urine um, its ammonia smell. Um, eventually it, it denigrates into ammonium. Uh, and then uh, hydrochloric acid, you have that also secreted. Uh, you have carbon dioxide reabsorbed. Remember, that's the facilitator with the bicarbonate ion uh, to um, make sure you have the appropriate buffer, that buffer system um, in the blood. Very important part when we talk about blood. Uh, you also have this um, um, this counter transport or co transport, depending on the ion that's going on between um, um, sodium and hyd hydrogen ions, uh, particularly in, in the paratubular fluid uh, between sodium and um, hydrogen ions. You have an exchange pump uh, between uh, sodium and um, the uh, amino acid deamination, so the um, NH4. Uh, you have co-transports. You have one moving out while the other one's moving in. Uh, in the uh, area between the, in the basilar surface or the basement surface of the uh, epithelial cell that's closer to the paratubular capillaries, you have um, co-transport of chloride into the, uh, so it can go into the tubular fluid and then bicarbonate ions spared. Again, it's an electrogradient, uh, and then you have hydrogen into the um, into the paratubular area um, eventually as it goes through the cell, and sodium spared, um, as well as some bicarbonate ion if it's needed. Um, so some bicarbonate ion uh, is going to come in. Um, 
in in exchange for chloride so you have some co-transport of that also uh, back to this juxtamedullary uh, apparatus uh, we talked about it a little bit uh, secretes renin renin again is responsible for converting um, angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 that then going to the lungs with enzymes um, the uh, angiotensin um, uh, the ACE en enzymes in the lungs converting angiotensin 1 to 2 uh, that's going to act on um, the uh, blood pressure to increase blood pressure it can also regulate the uh, adrenal glands to secrete aldosterone aldosterone also can help increase blood pressure uh, that's that happens in, in the area where the uh, blood is coming in also um, it, it's regulated the blood's regulated both coming in and going out the collecting tubes a little bit more about them uh, they tend to be permeable uh, selectively permeable not not osmosis wise but their permeability is regulated um, they they merge from numerous different nephrons just to re refresh our memory and the fluid that's in the collecting tube then is going to drop into the papillary duct. Remember those papillary ducts are highly permeable to urea. Uh, it's one of the main things that we're making here. Um, the, in times of dehydration, those collecting tubes become um, um, more permeable and allow water to be reabsorbed. Uh, and in times of, of over, over concentration or over use of water or too much water uh, more can um, go back into the into the papillary duct not back into uh, here's the uh, another hormone um, antidiuretic hormone ADH antidiuretic hormone it's actually secreted by the pituitary gland and I wanted to have this on here it also helps you uh, see this image with regard to solute concentration uh, so the little thing that looks like a C on the on the left is supposed to be your glomerular capsule uh, with the filtrate coming through and in the absence of the of antidiuretic hormone ADH uh, you have normal things happening so water is absorbed so that red portion um, on the uh, far left of the proximal convoluted tubule is representing the fact that those cells are permeable to water so water is reabsorbed then you have a concentration of solutes going through the loop of Henle uh, and then the ascending limb of the uh, loop of Henle uh, more concentration of solutes and then as you go through the um, the uh, up the ascending limb to the distal convoluted tubule you have um, you have solutes absorbed into the collecting duct. Absence of uh, ADH, uh, large volume of dilute urine is created. If um, ADH is secreted, and this is if there's need to increase blood volume, blood uh, basically blood volume, is what's going to happen is ADH is going to act on that collecting tube specifically a little bit on the distal on the late distal convoluted tubule but mostly on the collecting tube so mostly on the collecting tube you have water reabsorb because of the presence of um, antidiuretic hor hormone ADH and this will lead to very concentrated urine or concentrated urine um, ADH is constantly being released uh, in a um, at, at a certain level with regard to the pituitary gland uh, but in times of um, change in blood volume uh, due to receptors that you have um, in the heart um, then uh, they, it will be re released in a larger fashion uh, this is your your concept map that you have in your book and again I couldn't find one that was particularly clear uh, but what I would suggest you do is you try to have your um, book open to the summary summary of renal function uh, and one of the things I like about this first of all it puts it all together between the glomerulus and the um, the proximal convoluted tubule the loop of Henle and the distal and the collecting tube but it's also putting the uh, capillary bed in there the um, paratubular capillaries or the vasorecta if it's uh, the deeper 
uh, the deeper loop of Henle. Uh, and it shows you this concept of the countercurrent multiplication. Uh, so you have, uh, and let me just, you know, clear that up right now, is you have the filtrate moving through the tube. And so the filtrate is moving from the left to the right on your image, whereas the blood is moving from the right to the left. And that's the countercurrent. And actually, as they move in opposite directions, the uh, level of solute concentration uh, is moving from low concentration to high. Uh, and so I, I couldn't find both of them together on one slide, besides it really would have been um, probably blurry. Uh, but uh, you start out at the proximal where water is mostly being reabsorbed. Um, and you have, um, if you start at the um, about 600, you have solute concentration the same on both sides. But as you drop down, so as you drop down in the proximal convoluted tubule into the descending loop of Henle, uh, the solute concentration actually remains the same. And then uh, if you go down between the capillary bed and the uh, tube system, constant, the, the solute concentration is the same between each of them um, until you move on up uh, into the, um, in, into the um, I guess I, I, I'm kind of going backward, uh, but the, the, with the, sorry, with the uh, capillary bed, this, the solute concentration is actually increasing with the tube system of the proximal loop of Henle distal, the, the, the solute concentration is increasing temporarily and then decreasing. And that's important because remember, things go from a higher concentration gradient to a lower in a very, very passive way. Um, water is going to be reabsorbed um, because in, in the tube system because of the various things that we talked about. Uh, but this is why um, we this concept of countercurrent multiplication. This is why things uh, the things that have moved out of the tube system will now be reabsorbed into the capillary beds. So we're not necessarily telling the story of why is it reabsorbed in the capillary beds, but, but it, it is a more or less, it, it's a passive process based on concentration gradients that are being created by the tube system of the nephron. And then you have the um, uh, second part in your textbook, uh, and you, here's where you're seeing where um, not only aldosterone works in the late distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct, uh, but also where ADH works. Again, mostly in the collecting tube or collecting duct, whichever way you want to uh, put it, but a little bit in the late portion of the distal, distal convoluted tubule. Uh, moving on to urine itself. So that's the urine we created. And what we created is something with um, a pigment, a urochrome, from the destruction of hemoglobin and solutes. Uh, it's fairly sta sterile, however, it is going out a tube that's not sterile, generally, the ureter. Um, and it's slightly, it have a slight smell, a uh, pH of around 6 and a specific gravity of 1.001 to 1.035. Um, and this table comes from your textbook. Um, this is normal range. The pH actually can go from 4.5 to 8. Um, specific gravity generally stays with, within that realm of 1.003 to 1.30. Uh, so the specific gravity 1.001 to 1.35. I think we'll go with the one that's in your textbook in terms of that. Um, the um, osmotic, osmotic concentration, the osmolarity, um, you have their water content, volume per day, color, and odor. Bacterial content generally not in urine. The bacteria isn't in the urine. The bacteria is in what, in what it passes through. We'll pick this up on the next one.